Okay, uh, so this is part two now. Hopefully we can get all of the rest of this done in part two, but it may take maybe even three parts. Who knows? Uh, but I really do want to go over it, so let's let's move on. This is the last one we just talked about, um, which was pretty interesting. And again, check out part one if you missed that. Let's move on over here. Uh, four one, the move he played. This was on Vasil kill, and then the question is the one, and I think the kill is pretty clear. Um, sorry, I got a text that happens. I guess I'm just a popular dude. I wish that were true. Anyway, so the kill is clear, as as we can see in all of the top five moves. The kill is clear. The question is the one, and uh, this is a very obvious one. This is a mistake. Uh, his equity goes goes up big time when he brings instead of playing here, where he's only got where he's got this guy now slotting the four, and this I guess we can pull the position up right here. This is the new position. If instead he plays this, he's now got an extra direct guy bearing down onto this point, which I was just reading this in Palma Girl's book, Backgammon. Um, when you go from one guy to two guys bearing down, it almost, I think it, if not doubles, comes very close to your the, ch the likelihood of kill and covering with an extra guy. So there you go, that, that's, that's very clear. All right, 6-5. Uh, this is not... Uh, so the five is forced, and the question is the six. This one was on him. I could see merit in actually, um, actually probably play this move. I don't like breaking the midpoint when I have five back. That's the, that's not the right idea. Uh, this is probably the right idea, and that is the right idea. And I think the reason why it's not this and not this is you need these guys right now. Um... I don't know what that means. I don't know what I'm what I mean by that. What I mean by that is when they don't get killed, they're super valuable. Like this guy, say I guess it's specific basically to a four deuce, now that I think about it. Or a five one. This guy's a monster against those rolls. So yeah, this is the idea. Although they are they all are relatively close. Alright, let's let's try to be speedy here. Um Cube still not in play. We have a 6-4 to play. And that is a brutal roll. Uh, 6 blocked here. 4 blocked here. So probably not inclined to play this 6-4. Uh, as you can see, all of these all of these moves, the best move loses him a monstrous amount of equity. I think I've been using the word... No, I've been using murderous a lot. Um, anyway, the right idea is to double slot these two. This move, I mean, I, I I don't have anywhere near the amount of knowledge that I need to make that um, that analysis. You have to leave a double shot either way. I guess it's because this one's only against two, and this way you're leaving literally you're leaving a triple shot. I should say, uh, almost a quadruple shot actually. Yeah, a six, five, four kills from five to nine, and I thought there was one more and deuce. So you're leaving a quadruple shot that way. Uh, and this way you're only leaving a double shot. So that actually seems pretty clear. Um, although they're, they're... Actually, they're not even close. That is very clear. So at this point, of course, um, I think it's prudent, especially given the way... Considering it was a quadruple shot, red should, of course, be doubling now that it's their turn. Uh, we see that the computer confirms that. Let's see what the actual equity is as we enter right here. Yeah, red. Oh wow, I can't believe it's only sixty three point five, uh, but that's still with twenty seven point six gammon equity, so that's that's big, um, and it should be a take from white, which I'd, I'll tell you one thing. I would I would probably not be taking it, um, and then we get after this turn after after uh, that move he does get the kill. I do fan, and then he does in fact cube me and I pass. We move on. The score is three to one. Yeah, I oh, this was a quick one, so maybe we can get through this quickly. Uh, let's see, opening roll was six deuce, and this is a big blunder on the reply by me. Double fives. Is it two in? Yes, it is. I remember regretting that um, once I did it, so that's a big blunder. The opening response, when you can do it, is kill on the ace and bring those in, apparently. We move on, um, because... 
we got to this point. Wait, what? Okay, 6-4, I killed. Oh, he rolls then a 6-4. I thought it was a 6-5. He fans. I then double and he passes. I wouldn't be... Okay, it, it is actually a pass. Um, it's actually a big pass. Okay. We move on. 3-2. to two. Um, We find ourselves here. It's my turn to play. It's a 6-3. The 6 seems clear. Is it just run? Yeah. So it's just run um, by a big, big, big margin. And I think actually this might have been the roll. I know I rolled a 6-3 at one point, and Vasil suggested, as we were just talking about the game, he said it might be just run. Uh, and I think that was this position, and he was right. So just run there. Um, hop fences, jump over benches. When you see me come and get the fuck out the entrance... I, got, I think that's not even the first time I've used that reference. There's a Wu-Tang Clan song called Run. Or uh, is that even the name of the song? Um, that's just how the chorus goes. Okay, did I skip one? I didn't. And we do have a double, so let's look at that. Um, and it is a double slash take. And I doubled. I was, I was the one who cubed. I typically am the one who knocks with the cube. So it's White's turn to roll, and I doubled. And the reason I doubled is because I have these sixes are free, and it doesn't look like he's going to be making it anytime soon, unless he gets very lucky. Uh, meanwhile, my Lama goes all the way back. Uh, this is all about timing, and that's why I doubled. Um, and I think this is a, definitely a good double. And I'm glad to see that it wasn't a double prior to that, but now it is, so I timed it perfectly. Let's move on. Just wanted to give myself some praise. Uh, this is a big blunder by me, apparently. I was trying to slot a 6 prime uh, a couple of ways. And the better idea is run? Yeah. What do you know? Um, I, I'm always concerned about leaving a blot in here, but maybe I shouldn't be. Just because um, when he kills and covers, it can be so disastrous. But I guess that's only 3-3, three, 5-3... Three, three, um, and I, I know I always said so dumb, uh, and I know it blows my mind in poker when like people miscount how many outs they have, just because I played poker so so long and it's so automatic. Uh, but back in is certainly not automatic for me yet, like counting outs. Um, hopefully I'll get to that point sometime. I think those are at the five three and three three is the point. So yeah, uh, bring it out, bring it on down to Omeletteville and run. All right. Five deuce. The deuce is forced. This is not the five. What is the five? That's the five. Man, I'm a. Oh, I guess it duplicates the one, first of all. Um, he can only kill with a one, so he only has an 11 out of 30 shot. 36 shot. And also, um, only has a one in 36, 36 shot of a double kill. That being said, that just seems. Oh, man, that seems danger zone to me. But it is uh, massively right. That is massively correct. So, I hope I can... I, I think it's only correct by so much because it's they're duplicated. But I guess given that they are duplicated and given that it is a one that's duplicated, which is the... Like, there are no sums for one. He, he has to actually roll an, an ace. Um, I guess that makes it, the gamble worth it. When you've got such a strong llama going. For those who don't remember, the llama is what we call a prime, because sometimes they look like a llama, but Tony from Survivor calls it a llama, and so we call it a llama. And I blunder again the next turn. Man, I am not good at backgammon. Oh, this is just brutal. I just rolled some dumb rolls. Um, or that was my thought at the time, I think. Um, and I wasn't sure what to do. I didn't like giving up this and let it, allowing him to roll six a good a six, um, but I didn't at the same time want to kill or leave myself shots. And as it turns out, those are both better ideas than doing what I did. Uh, the best idea is killing. The second best idea is leaving him a shot. So a double shot, I should say, double shot is better than giving him a six. Leaving him a double shot is better than letting him run with a six. 
So that is definitely something we need to incorporate. Not only is it better, it is massively, massively better. Like 40% winning chance is better. All right. At least if I'm... I think, I think that's what that means. Um, A6, yet again on me. This is, I mean, I played horribly this match. No denying it. The 6 is not forced. What's the better move? Slot, play it to here and run? Yes, by quite a bit. So why did I do what I did? Well, because I wanted to give... I wanted... I, I'll tell you why, actually. Um, Ace-4 and 3-4. A four is forced. If he rolls one three or three four, so I'm surprised actually. But this is a much, this is a much much better move. Even though there it, it means, oh because the four is still forced. And you're further up. Okay, I didn't consider that. That does make a lot of sense. The four is still forced from there. It leaves him a lot for the future down there. It just in some scenarios. Um, yeah, so that does actually make quite a bit of sense. Because he's probably... That gives you a ton of freedom, and your gamut equity must be so much higher. Let's see. Oh, that's not... It doesn't show. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. 11.26. Gotta watch the clock. Um, this one's probably gonna take three parts. But they'll be worth it. 5.3, and this is just a typical goat roll. Um, but he misplayed. And that's surprising. Um, five three. I mean, it's a it's a horrible roll. But wait, what? Oh, what a dumbass! I assumed he killed and covered, but he didn't. Um, I guess it's close. Oh, I see why he didn't because he's trapped behind a six, a six prime. I'm sorry. I gotta pay more attention. I gotta look at the whole board before I start berating people. Um. Okay. So his his move. I understand why he played it now. Um, although I do... Yeah, that, that his move makes sense because he's trying to... Actually, no, I think this move is even better at minimizing bad rolls because his move... I mean, we can look at the position. This move, there's still tons of bad rolls. 5-4, what do you do? I mean, I guess it's forced, or semi-forced. Um, but yeah, so, okay. So back to the position at hand. Yeah, kill it. Um, yeah, go ahead and kill and cover in that spot, Mr. Goat. Okay. Uh, I think we got time for at least one more scenario. A 5-4. Brutality. Um, oh, I thought I was the man with this move. I thought my technique was so nasty. Look at what I played. Um, I just got in my own head here. This is I left him the shot here. Because I felt like I had a lot of freedom to come back around and still gamut him. Uh, but it turns out, just don't be a hero. Uh, just play to safety. Is massively better. Much, much better. Okay, we can, we can squeeze in another one. 6-1. Six, 6 is forced. And what is the scenario this doesn't seem like I mean I guess you just run get one pip close yeah I guess when every pip counts of course EPC um yeah of course EPC in this in this spot I'm already bearing off you have to play out EPC every pip counts kids alright um and then this is just a minor technique issue where uh th reduce I mean why not just play in what do you I guess to save sixes but at this point let's see how bad this is oh it's not as bad as it okay it's yeah it's play that guy in but um not the end of the world it's pretty bad it's like you're getting gammon 10% more of the time so it, that's pretty bad like this this move loses you 1.09 points, and this move loses you 1.135 points. So, yeah. Alright. Uh, stay tuned for part three. Thanks for checking this out.